Good morning, everyone. I hope this finds everyone well and living your best life in Jesus Christ. I find myself frustrated in the current circumstances because I have so much to do, so many projects to work on, and I just can't seem to get started. I'll be the first person to admit that I tend to have perfectionist tendencies. I often find myself not starting on something because I don't have the time or the resources to do it well. Wait a minute, did I say well? I mean perfectly. I mean, I just might fail, so I don't try. This idea that I have to do everything perfectly comes from an idea that I'm never going to be good enough. For years, I have suffered from the idea that I'll always fall short, I'll always be second best, I'll always be a failure. So, therefore, I became hypercritical of myself. People will say, Kevin, that was beautiful music you played. But I'll say in my head, yeah, but I missed a lot of notes. Oh, Kevin, I love that piece you wrote. Yeah, but my grammar was bad. It could have been a lot better. Kevin, that was a wonderful sermon. Yeah, but I didn't feel like it really touched people like I thought it would. The idea that I'm never going to be good enough is deeply buried in my mind, and it's nothing more or less than a lie of Satan that keeps me from starting, keeps me from trying, keeps me from achieving. That fear of failure is a powerful motivator, well, demotivator, that if I'm not careful, controls my whole life and makes me seek to be silent, inert, closed in, hidden, trapped. Slowly but surely, with the grace of God, I have been becoming less silent, less inert, less hidden, and freed from the burden of having to be perfect all the time. When you learn how to relax in God's liberating grace and break out of the prison of perfectionism, you find a new level of joy and freedom in your life. Why? Because perfectionism is destructive to your life in several ways. First, it defeats your initiative. Have you ever had a project you haven't been able to get started? You think, one of these days I'm going to get around to it, but you just can't seem to take that first step. One possible reason is perfectionism. You've been waiting for the perfect circumstance or timing or waiting for your kids to go to bed or you're waiting until you have a certain amount of money or you have this particular piece of equipment. When you set your standards so high, perfectionism becomes paralysis and you can't get anything done. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11.4, Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. I like the Living Bible. It says, if you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. The second thing is, it damages your relationships. Nobody likes being nagged or corrected all the time. It's frustrating and irritating. The Bible says, love forgets mistakes. Nagging about them parts the best of friends. That's also the Living Bible, Proverbs 17.9. Perfectionism, the desire to always be correct, damages relationships because it's rooted in insecurity. Perfectionists who are harsh and demanding on other people are really harsh and demanding on themselves. And the third thing is it destroys your happiness. Ecclesiastes 17 says, don't be over-righteous, don't be over-wise. Why destroy yourself? This scripture isn't talking about genuine righteousness or real wisdom, it's talking about perfectionism. You can transform any virtue into a vice by taking it to an extreme. Your worst nag lives under your skin because you are your own worst critic, and that's true for all of us. Since we tend to resent and even dislike people who nag us, if you're always nagging yourself, what does that say about you? It says that you don't like yourself. You think you're not good enough. You think reminding yourself what's wrong with you is going to motivate you into doing the right thing all the time. It's not. That's called perfectionism, and it causes you to constantly put yourself down. There's really just one antidote for perfectionism. It's not a self-help book or doctor's office. You can only learn to relax when you fully experience the liberating grace of God. See, Jesus accepts that we are flawed, that we fail, and that we're often our own worst enemy, but... You know what? He loves us anyway. He forgives our failures. And he works for our best in all things, even when we fall short. He covers us in his grace. After every perceived failure, he picks us up, dusts us off, dries our tears, and says, That's okay. You'll get it next time. What a wonderful thought. I don't have to be perfect. I am instead being perfected by the grace of God. So today, I encourage you to get started on that project. It probably won't be perfect. But with the Lord's help, it will be blessed. I hope you have a terrific day today in Christ. I'm here should you need me, and I love you all.